This is Bob from Gemini Data, and today we're going to give a quick overview of the Gemini SBox appliance. For those of you not familiar, the SBox Gemini appliance is a solution for deploying, managing, and using big data platforms such as Splunk and Hadoop. We deliver this appliance either as hardware with all of the disk, CPU, and memory needed for your applications, or as a software appliance that can be deployed on AWS or VMware. The appliance features GEM, the Gemini Enterprise Manager, which provides centralized management for all of your Gemini SBox appliances, whether they are on-premises, in the cloud, or sitting in a virtual environment. Our goal is to provide the simplest experience possible for the big data administrator. This includes reducing the need for IT ops or expensive Linux administrators. But let's get right into a demo. First, we're going to look at the installation of the appliance itself. Once we get the appliance racked, we power it up so we can answer a couple of simple questions about the networking environment. When the login prompt appears, enter user sbox and the passphrase facing jet function drive. The system will ask you immediately to change this long passphrase. Once again, enter facing jet function drive Hit enter and choose a new password for the SBox user. This password will only be used when the SBox user needs to authenticate. Now we're going to enter the command SBox setup. The system should immediately ask for the password you just created, so let's enter it now. The SBox setup screen will start and will ask you for information about your IP address, your NetMask, and your gateway. Enter all of that here. You'll also have the option to change the system's host name right from the screen. We can also change this later in the product. We'll choose our time zone, and that's it. We're finished configuring the Gemini SBox appliance. From this point forward, we will finish the configuration with a web browser and the IP address of the appliance we just configured. Now let's go ahead and set up the Gemini SBox appliance using its IP address and a web browser. The first thing you'll notice is the end user acceptance agreement. Please go ahead and accept that. That'll be followed by an opportunity to change the localization of the appliance. So system language, host name, time zone regions. Please enter those here and hit next. The next option has to do with the Gemini SBox Appliance license type. For now, we're just going to choose the Enterprise Edition free trial. The next option we'll have is to join an existing Gemini SBox cluster. For purposes of this demo, we're going to operate as a standalone appliance. The last thing that the setup screen will ask you to do is change the admin password. This is the password we will use to log into the web graphic user interface. Now we should see a success message and should immediately be returned to the Gemini SBox Appliance login page. So for the next part of this demonstration, we'd like to show you how to install Splunk. So first of all, we're gonna navigate back to the URL of the browser. We'll log in using admin and the password we've set up for the admin. And right in the middle there, we can choose activate Splunk. So the first thing we'll see is instructions on how to download Splunk if you have it, haven't already downloaded it. Uh, if you have, click Upload and Install. And here to choose the tarball. Once I find that tarball on disk, I can go and hit Upload. The Gemini Appliance will take care of the rest. Now it will come back and ask me a quick question about validating the Splunk version. Assuming that's OK, I'm going to click Install here and we should be off and running. I will have to accept the Splunk end user license. Uh, at the end of the install, it's gonna ask me if I want to optimize the Splunk role. So Splunk Optimizer is a feature of the Gemini SBox appliance. Uh, we're gonna optimize this one as an indexer. This will set up all the configuration that, that we need for this particular node to be an indexer. Uh, I'm gonna hit restart, because that's what we're gonna need to do after we make those configuration changes. Uh, this will chug along just for a second, and Splunk will immediately come back up. Now, just to verify all this, I can pop into the, uh, I can go back up to the home page, 
and I will see that Splunk is indeed up and running uh, with the version that I just deployed. Now let's move into a quick demo of the Gemini Enterprise Manager to show off how we're adding speed, simplicity, and security into the lives of the big data administrators. So we're going to start by logging into the appliance. So a couple things to notice right off the bat. In addition to the featured platforms, we have the Gemini Integration Center. Here you'll find applications to add value to the big data you're already collecting. These applications are both from Gemini and our partners. New in version 2.2 is the Uber Agent app, which provides additional insight into your Citrix deployments. Typically, when I go through a demonstration of the appliance, there's three things that I talk about. Nodes, clusters, and Splunk. Starting with node management, what we've done here is made administration of the appliance as simple as possible. Changing anything about the system time, NTP, time zones, the system name, or, or network configurations is all as simple as going to a web page and making the changes. In addition, every Gemini SBox appliance can be configured as a log receiver. With a couple of clicks, SyslogNG is all set up. Sure, managing a single SBox node is easy, but we've extended that paradigm out to managing groups of appliances. We call this collection of nodes a cluster, and a cluster can contain various node groups. For instance, I can put all of my forwarders in a specific node group, or I could set up a node group specifically for all the nodes that are in the Chicago office. Building on this idea of clusters, we've introduced jobs. Jobs will perform a task on all of my SBox nodes or just on a specific node group. For instance, if I want to restart Splunk on all of my appliances, I can create the job here. I name it Restart Splunk. I choose the relevant task from the task list, which in this case will be Restarting Splunk. I define which node group I want it to run upon and at what time I want this job to run. Those familiar with system automation will realize this is very similar to the functionality provided by Chef, Puppet, or Ansible, but without having to know, configure, or purchase Puppet, Chef, or Ansible. So now we'll talk about some of the value that the appliance adds for Splunk itself. Once you visit the Splunk tab, you'll see some of the more common Splunk settings. Here's where we'll also find the Splunk Optimizer. Now we mentioned this before when we were doing the installation, but the Splunk Optimizer provides a starting point for any Splunk configurations. Quickly set the personality of any particular node to search head forward or indexer or all in one. These default values are all taken right from Splunk best practices. And everything that Gemini consultants have learned over the, over the last 10 years of providing Splunk services. Another thing I like to talk about is a configuration editor. Choose any Splunk configuration file and edit it right from your web browser. No SSH, no VI, cut and paste works here. Of course, we can save or, or cancel. In addition to the configuration editor, we support a configuration repository for, for versioning. Take a checkpoint of your entire Splunk configuration file and roll back to a known working version if your configuration should somehow go awry. We also provide access to a Splunk command line, so any of the command line Splunk options that you need to provide can be done right here, and we'll check Splunk status. One of the other very exciting features of the 2.2 release is support for Cloudera deployment. Take any SBox appliance and configure it as a Cloudera node. This will greatly reduce the amount of time needed to correctly configure nodes for your Cloudera install. There's a handful of other new features in the 2.2 release, including web single sign-on and support for customer-generated keys. One other feature that's been widely requested has been a real-time audit report of all of the library versions and ports that are used in the normal operation of the system. You can see all of those here from the audit report. If you have any other questions about the Gemini SBox appliance, or want to see how it can be used within your organization, please feel free to reach us at contact at geminidata.com. 
Thank you very much for attending this webinar and have a great day.